Hi, my name is Ashley and I am a volunteer at Priceless Pets Rescue and an animal rights advocate. So there have been a ton of questions within our rescue community recently, um, just asking about animal testing. What is it? Why is it still going on? Um, are dogs being used? Like what the heck is going on? So. I wanted to just spend a few minutes and chit chat a little bit about animal testing, um, why it's still being used, and most importantly, what we can do as an animal loving, dog loving community to put an end to it because it's really not necessary. So within Priceless Pets, we have had the great honor within the past year to rescue, rehab, and rehome countless beagles that have come from animal testing facilities and that have also come from breeding facilities that breed and supply dogs to um, be tested on. So I think that's really a big reason why we have had a lot of questions and a lot of inquiries about animal testing. And as sad and horrible as it is, I think it's also amazing that we now have this opportunity to shed light on animal testing and specifically dog testing because I think so many of us are like, it's 2022, animals shouldn't be tested on anymore. What do you mean dogs are tested on? Like, this is crazy. We, we have technology, right? We don't, why are we testing on animals? And that's a fabulous question. Um, I think one, of, one question that many of us are, are very, uh, very curious about and we, we don't obviously agree that animals should be tested on, um, but unfortunately it's still happening and it's still happening right here in the United States. There is uh, countless studies that say on average every single year, 100 million animals here in the United States are tested on. Now, the sad thing is, is that that statistic is not even the full story. The federal government does not require mice and rats to be added into that statistic. So you can only imagine 100 million plus rice, well, mice and rats. Um, that's a great, crazy, crazy number of animals here in the United States that are being subjected to these horrible, cruel um, tests. And uh, the, the biggest question is why? Why is this happening? And the answer is money, greed. We don't require animal testing. It's not a law here in the United States. So does it need to be done? Absolutely not. So why is it still being done? It's being done because in China, it is a law. So any product that is put on the market in China is required to be tested on, um, animals to be, to be tested on. So the reality is, is that when you have these companies that are saying we only test on animals when required by law, it's not a law. It's a law because you are being greedy and you are deciding that profit is coming before ethics in this situation and you're not happy with just selling to America. You're thinking that you need to sell um, to China whereas it's required by law. So. You get a lot of these really interesting ways that these companies word things um, and they make it seem like they love animals and they don't want to test on animals, but they have to. That's absolute baloney. You don't have to, you're choosing to because you're being greedy. So that's a very sad, sad thing. Um, we think about animal testing and we primarily, I think most of us are thinking of rodents, like I mentioned the mice and the rats. We're also thinking of maybe bunnies, guinea pigs, and absolutely they're tested on. You know, when we think of bunnies, we're thinking of cosmetic tests where they're melting um, different sorts of lipsticks and putting them in their eyes. That's called the Dre's eyes test. All these really silly tests, um, companies like Clorox, Windex, all of these home uh, cleaning products are using these animals. But then you have this whole other side of animal testing that isn't small animals, and it's dogs, it's cats, it's pigs, it's sheep, it's horses. So it really is a full spectrum of animals that are being tested on. 
for the purpose of our, our dogs that we take in, um, I wanted to chat a little bit about dogs specifically and what they are normally um, used for testing. So the most common thing that we, not we, but uh, companies use dogs for is for nicotine and cigarette uh, smoke. So what they do is they actually force these dogs by putting their nose into a um, chamber. They force them to inhale all of these toxic chemicals that are coming from these products that we already know are bad, right? We already know that these products could kill us. For some reason, we're still testing, I guess, to just double check. Um, it's, it's really ridiculous. But um, so we have that side of it where we have the very common um, smoking and nicotine companies. And then we also have this other side of it where we have companies that are testing for medical reasons. Um, we have a very famous college, who I'm not gonna name the name, but they test on golden retrievers for muscular dystrophy. Um, and if you watch these videos, it's, it's horrific. And what's so sad is we have all these testing um, facilities and all of these companies that are testing on animals and it's very hush-hush. I feel like as a society, we are not really aware of what's going on. And, um, you know, marketing companies do a great job. They do a great job of, of hiding this. Um, I think my, my favorite, I hate to say the word favorite, but my, the one company that always comes to mind is Dawn Dish Soap. And when you think of Dawn, you think of this company that loves animals and Whenever there's an oil spill, they're right there, right, to, to use their Dawn dish soap to, to get the, um, the little ducks and the sea otters free of all that oil from the oil spill. But the reality is they're testing on the animals. So it's all marketing and um, it's very, very interesting. So what can you do? What can we do as a society to stop this, to stop animal testing? Because it's such a, a common, um, thing that's still going on. And the biggest thing I would say of what can we do is to simply stop buying the products that test on animals, right? If we stop that demand and we stop that source of income for these products and they're now producing products and not being able to sell them, they're gonna do two things. They're A, either gonna go bankrupt, right? Or B, gonna come to their senses and say, hmm, maybe we need to implement new rules where we're not testing on animals. And um, it sounds like such an easy thing to do, and it is. It is a very easy thing to do. So there's so many resources online that you can use to look up products to make sure that you're only purchasing products that aren't tested on animals. There's a thing called the Leaping Bunny program, and you can look that up. Um, a lot of products, if you look on the back of the product, you will see there's a little bunny logo, so that means cruelty-free, hasn't been tested on. But again, I want to just remind you that companies are smart. So like I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, there are some companies that will say not tested, only tested when required by law. So you have to be smart about it and you have to really do your research and make sure that these companies truly aren't testing on animals. They're not testing on animals in America and they're not testing on animals um, in China. So that's something to look for and to make sure, right? So now we know we're not gonna buy any more products that test on animals. We're only gonna buy cruelty-free products. What else can we do? Great. Now we can do something else that is a free thing, right? We love free, free is easy. And that's share, share the word, share, share the message, share what's going on. And you can do that via social media, you can do it via word of mouth, you can do it by writing to um, you know, your, your local government and explaining how you are very, very against this and how you know, there is no data and evidence that shows that testing on animals in any way directly correlates to humans, right? Because it's two totally different species. So that's, that's another great way. Be an advocate for animals and use your voice and use social media. It's such an amazing tool. 
And then the final thing that I would say we can do is to support rescue groups. Support groups like Priceless Pets who are taking in animals that have been subjected to um, horrific, horrific lives um, in laboratories or testing facilities. And there's so many out there. There's so many that are taking in dogs that you can um, adopt out, which is fantastic. There's also other sanctuaries, uh, farm sanctuaries that take in farm animals. So just really educate yourself and Google, right? It's so easy, but Google search. Google search what rescue groups you can volunteer at, you can um, donate financially to, you can spread the word again about. And that's really the biggest thing. So those are my three tips. Number one being stop buying products that test on animals. Number two is spread the word, spread the message. And number three is to support. Support when you can, um, whether it be with your time by volunteering or by uh, donations. So yes, that is a little bit about animal testing and um, you know, fingers crossed that it is something that will be coming to an end soon but all we can do is what we can do, right? So if we can do something and um, you know it affects just one person, think of the chain reaction. If we change and affect one person, more than likely they're going to also tell and change and affect one person. So all it takes is, is one. And um, it's so important to use your voice, especially when it comes to animals because they can't speak. So we have to be advocates for them and speak up for them and stand up for them. So thank you so much for listening and um, thank you so much for being a part of the Priceless Pets community. We are such an amazing community and we're doing such amazing things. So we are so thankful to have you and your support. Thank you.